This is the 11th video presentation for the Case Ag, Power, and Technology course. As you view this video, be sure to make notes of important information. Feel free to pause, repeat, and resume the video whenever necessary. Chemical Energy, Lesson 5-1, Chemical Energy. You have completed Lesson 4-3, Fasten and Fuse, during which you observed fastening elements and fusing processes before fabricating a custom doorstop. This presentation provides information about the types of energy contained within molecules and related reactions. Potential energy is stored in the bonds of atoms that make up compounds. Ethanol is a compound that releases energy when the bonds are broken. An exothermic reaction occurs when the bonds between atoms are broken and energy is released. An endothermic reaction occurs when energy is taken from its surroundings. Common exothermic reactions include combustion of fuels to heat buildings and power vehicles. Combustion of fuel requires a heat source and oxygen. Combustion of a fuel results in heat energy, carbon dioxide, and water. Metals chemically react with each other and exchange electrons. Those electrons can be harnessed and used. As a review, mark or highlight three key points in your notes that are important to remember from this presentation. List two ideas or concepts that relate to previous knowledge. List any questions you have about this topic. Discuss these questions with your instructor. Keep any notes you have from this presentation organized and available for use throughout the course. Through activity 511, heating up, you will make a hand warmer using elements that chemically react in order to understand how chemical reactions release and absorb thermal energy. Your teacher will provide more instructions and the materials needed for the activity. During the activity, you will use the Vernier Infrared Temperature Sensor. The following clip introduces the sensor and provides some practical advice for how to use the sensor in the lab. This is the Vernier Infrared Thermometer and what it does is it measures the temperature of objects without having to touch them. And it measures the infrared radiation coming from the object and then it comes into this part of the detector here and measures the temperature. So it, it's nice to be able to do things like measure temperatures in the environment. So to turn the device on, um, this is the on off button where it says measure and you actually turn that on. And at this point we see a temperature that's coming up here. And if I hold my hand maybe in front of it like that, I get one temperature. If I flip it over, maybe the back of my hand's a little colder there. Now there's also a couple of other buttons here. And this one right here where it says hold, uh, what this will do is if you press it, it will hold whatever the last temperature was uh, on there. So the idea here is that you could aim it at something, just press hold, and it will give you that value. You could write it down so it's not changing on you. So if you're using it as a standalone device, uh, you might choose to use that. Now the other button here is a laser button. And what this does is it turns on the laser, and the laser gives you a circle. So if I turn it on here, um, we can actually I'll turn it towards the here so you can see there's lasers coming out of there. And so it turns it on and we can have the, the circle that's on my hand. It's measuring the temperature inside the circle there. So whatever radiation is coming from that area inside the circle is what it's measuring. So if I move further out, the circle gets bigger. If I get closer, the circle gets smaller. A uh, common question I will get with this one is like, how far away can the object be? Well, it can be very, very far away, but what it's doing is it's looking at the radiation coming from the solid angle from the object. So it could be a wall that's very distant, um, but it's going to be the large area of that wall. If you're close to the wall, it's just going to be a little piece of the wall. So I, you know, I turned it on, so pretty obviously that it must have some um, battery inside, and it turns out that it does. That It's back here behind this panel here. Uh, it's just some AAA batteries. So at this point, I need to attach this to the cable. And so this is the infrared uh, thermometer cable. And it just plugs in via the phono plug here at the back. And I'm going to plug it into my LabQuest here. 
and now we get our reading here on the device, on our meter. Now let's take a look at our upper right corner here. Uh, it's a similar default mode to most of the temperature sensors being time-based in three minutes, 180 seconds. This one defaults to one sample per second uh, for that. Now that's good for some things. Uh, what I would like to do is lengthen my time a little bit. I'd like to do maybe for about five minutes and so I'm going to go up here and press up there and then uh, I want to change this to five minutes or 300 seconds so I'll tap on 180 make this 300 and say done and now I'm fine with that I will say OK and now we're ready to collect data. I will turn on my my laser and so we can see the laser circle uh, down in there and then uh, I will hit the collect button and it starts to collect data. Let it start running there for a second and then I will turn this on and now it is on and we'll let it collect data for five minutes. So I've let about half of my time elapse here so at this point I'm going to turn it off and we'll watch the cooling of the skillet. Now our data collection is complete. I can turn off my laser and we've got our data. Now for this one, uh, for the analysis I might be interested in, you know, what was the maximum temperature so I could go to statistics, check the box next to temperature, and I ended up with the maximum of 172.7 degrees C at 180 seconds.